So now we're looking at a compound manometer. Uh, it can look a little scary at first, but it's very simple when you compare it to a simple manometer. We basically just do the same thing three times in a row. We're always comparing the pressure differences between these two points and then just carrying on, uh, always using the specific gravity, or sorry, actually the, the density of the fluids we're working in and the height difference from one level to another. So we're looking at this. We want to solve what is pressure inside this bubble here. This is all a glass tube that has the same diameter, and the diameter is not small enough that we have to worry about capillary action. Uh, over here we have P atmosphere 101 kilopascals pushing down at 20 degrees Celsius. So first of all, that means we want to find out what's P1. Well, first of all, P1 is equal to P atmosphere, right? This air is just pushing down like that, uh, and so this is equal to 101 kPa kilopascals or 101,000 pascals. All right, so we want to find out then what is P2. So all we have to do is say, actually, let's go over here to save some space. So we have P2 is going to equal P1. And now we have, remember, plus or minus rho g h. Well, now let's look at this. Are we going to add or subtract? Well, we're going to have to subtract. And the reason is if we want to have our our datum for zero, this height here, we'll call this y, so we'll have the same height over here is going to be y, which means that this pressure here will also be p1. And that means that we're going to be comparing this level here, this blue line that I drew, with this boundary here at 2. And so if you think about the pressure at 2, if you go deeper into the fluid, p1 is going to be greater, which means p2 will be less than p1. And again, that's p1. Um, so that means that P2 will be less than P1, so we're going to have to have something smaller than P1, so we're going to subtract. So we're going to have minus rho g h. All right, so when we go and do this, we will have, we need to use the pen, not the eraser. Uh, we have P1, so we have 101, we can even say 1,000 pascals. Minus, well, the density of mercury, you can find this in a table. Uh, so we would, uh, any fluids or thermal book, and we'll have that is 13,550 kilograms per cubic meter times 9.81 meters per second squared, that's G, and times our height in meters, that's just going to be this difference here that we're looking at, we're just looking at this column of fluid right here, uh, that's going to be 0 0.15 meters. So. If we multiply these together, we'll get units in pascals. So we'll have 101,000 point 101,000 pascals minus this will be 19.9 pascals, and so this will give us our answer of 81,100 pascals. Okay, so that's P2, and that hopefully makes sense. Uh, we're, you know, we're at a level in this fluid, in this column of fluid that's higher up than the level over here, so it has to be less. Again, if we're using the same kind of argument from the last videos, if we're pushing down here, um, if this pressure pushing down here was the same as this pressure pushing down at this boundary, they would have to be level, but because we're pushing down, uh, we're going to have a greater force pushing down because the diameter is the same, so it's going to force this column of fluid up. And again, this difference here, so this pressure would be P1 and this difference, uh, between P1 and P2 uh, that we find in this column of fluid would be this 19.9 pascals. All right, so hopefully I didn't confuse anyone there. Uh, we've done a couple of these videos uh, just using simple manometers, but this is exactly the same process. So now what we want to do, we want to solve for P3. All right, I'm going to be changed back to black so we can see what we're doing here. So uh, we'll have P3 is going to equal P2 now plus or minus rho g h. Well, will it be plus or minus? So we have P1, uh, no, sorry, we have P2 right here. So again, if we have, if we want to reference from some height, just some height, doesn't matter where, we have this, let's call this y, and then over here on this side of the column, we would have also y. So that means that the pressure right here is going to be the same as P2. Or you could again use the analogy if you're pushing up at this point, it would have to be canceled out at this equal level of the same pressure. Anyway, so we have point two here. Uh, so now we're looking at P2 and P3 is gonna be right here. So if you go down deeper into the fluid to approach three, that means P3 is going to be greater than P2. So 
P3 is going to be greater than P2, so that means we're going to have to add something to P2. So we're going to subtract, or sorry, we're going to get rid of that minus sign, so we're going to add. Again, you what you can do is you can just look at this and say, well, P2 is way up here, P3 is way down here, P2 is obviously higher, so P2 has less pressure, P3 has more pressure, so we need to add something onto P2. There's a few different ways to look at this, but I try and hopefully I'm not being repetitive by saying all of them each time. All right, so P3, we're going to have P2. We have 81,000 pascals. Uh, now we're going to add rho GH. Well, first of all, rho, we're given the specific gravity of this oil. There's lots of different kinds of oils. Uh, so in this case, we have our oil is SG is 0 0.8. So all we need to do to find the density is 0 0.8 times the density of water. H2O. And it turns out we'll have 0 0.8 times the density of water at 20 degrees Celsius is 998 kilograms per cubic meter. So this is going to give us our density of oil like that is, well, my equal sign is kind of going the wrong way now. <laughs> um, we're going to have 798.4 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, so that's how you find that. If you're given standard uh, specific gravity, just multiply whatever that is to the, the density of water at this temperature that we're working in. Okay, so now back to this equation. So now we'll have 798.4 kilograms per cubic meter. I guess we can write the units kilogram per cubic meter. That's the density of this oil times 9.81 meters per second squared times, what else do we have in here? H. And our H here is 30 centimeters. That's this difference in height of the two ends of the fluid. So 0 0.3 meters. All right. So when we do this, we get 81,000. Plus, if you multiply these together, uh, we get units of pascals, and this becomes plus 2.3 kilopascals, or 2,300 pascals. And actually, I guess this is 81,100. I kind of got lazy there with rounding. All right, anyway, so we're going to have 81,100 plus this guy, so we'll get P3 is going to equal 83.4 kilopascals or 83,400 pascals. All right, time for the last one. So we're going to solve for P4 now. So we're running out of space, so let's just go over here. So we have P4 is going to equal P gas. All right, this, this is the gas that's pressing down on this fluid right here. So we have P4 equals P gas. And this is going to equal P3 plus or minus rho g h. Well, let's look at this. P4 is up here, P3 is down here, so P4 is higher, so it's going to be a lower pressure. So we're going to need to subtract something from P3 to get a lower pressure than P3. So we go minus. All right, so now we just have, this is equal to P3, so we had 83,400 pascals minus the density of water at 20 degrees Celsius, we have 998. We'll just drop the units to save time. That's kilograms per cubic meter times 9.81 meters per second squared times this height difference is 0 0.2 meters, 20 centimeters, but we need this in meters, so we get pascals. And then, so when we add these together, or sorry, subtract them, we get 83,400 minus, this number here is 1,000, 958 uh, if you multiply these together. So we're going to get that our P gas is going to equal 81,442, probably not exactly because I was getting lazy with the rounding pascals. So you're probably safer to say that this is just, you know, 81 kilopascals. All right, so there we go. That's how you solve a compound manometer problem. Just solve it just like you would for a simple manometer problem, but just do it one liquid at a time.